Back in the 60s, a Pulitzer Prize-winning scientist described the problem of childhood lead poisoning as so well-defined, so neatly packaged with both causes and cures known, that if we don't eliminate the social crime, our society deserves all the disasters it has coming. Well, we have the knowledge to redress this social crime. We know where the lead is, how people are exposed, and how it damages health. What we lack is the political will to do what should be done. Unfortunately, many policymakers consider the cost of action primarily in economic financial terms, and ignore the cost of inaction on human health and communities' livelihoods. At this point, most Americans have heard of the avoidable and abject failure of government on the local, state, federal level, in fact across the board, to prevent the mass poisoning of hundreds of children and adults in Flint, Michigan. A government plan to save some money had led public officials to switch the city's water source from one of the Great Lakes to the Flint River, the past sewer of the auto industry. Flint citizens complained that their tap water was foul and discolored, but officials took no heed. I wonder why. Officials failed to act for 18 months until a local pediatrician revealed dramatically elevated lead levels in children's blood. An investigation didn't just find fault, but highlighted seeming falsification of water quality results to keep people in the dark. Though the specific breed of alleged government corruption may be unique to Flint, the end result might not be so rare in the USA, home to an aging water system. As the president of the Children's Health Fund has said, Pandora's box is now wide open. Flint may only be the tip of an enormous iceberg, potentially one of a great many icebergs. In addition to lead paint and the residual lead everywhere from leaded gasoline, lead can leach from lead pipes, solder, or fixtures. Recognized to be a health issue in the U.S., back in 1845 a year our flag only had 26 stars. Yet the use of lead in water pipes and solder was not restricted until the Safe Drinking Water Act Amendment 141 years later. Was the city you're living in built before 1986? Today, the exact number of lead water pipes currently in use is not clear. About one in three cities surveyed shrug their shoulders. There are anti-corrosion chemicals you can add to tap water to try to keep the lead in the pipes. Flint could have done that, uh, but it uh, could have cost about $100 a day. Now they only have to pay a billion dollars. Let me close with a quote from the heroic pediatrician who blew the whistle, Dr. Hannah Atisha. She was asked, what advice would you have for other physicians taking on a whistleblower role? She replied, this is our job. This is why we went to medical school to help people.